At first glance, the undersea town of Bikini Bottom looks innocent enough with its nautical Pacific themes, but if you dig deep enough, you'll find some pretty gross and even disturbing stuff. Da, da. Just because SpongeBob is a kid's show, that doesn't mean it can't get gruesome, as proven by other shows like Ren and Stimpy and Courage the Cowardly Dog. But out of this show's many gruesome moments, which ones are not that bad, and which ones broke the internet? I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is SpongeBob Moments. Gruesome to most gruesome. When it comes to gruesome moments in SpongeBob, they tend to fit in either one of two categories painful or disgusting. The painful moments are usually the less gruesome of the two, so let's begin there. We start with SpongeBob's butt breaking. In I Had an Accident, SpongeBob makes a huge fall from Sand Mountain and lands, he breaks it, and it's left in a bunch of tiny little pieces like glass, and his legs are also torn off and lie limp. A few pieces even get jabbed into Patrick and Sandy. This is our least gruesome scene because of how brief it is, and the fact that SpongeBob got his butt glued back together. My what has a what now? Good thing this is SpongeBob though, because if this were us, we'd be gravely injured, if not dead. From one brief scene to another, we arrive at Gary getting flung to the wall. In the episode Gary Takes a Bath, one of the many techniques Spongebob uses to try to get Gary in the bathtub is with the game of Leapfrog. He leaps over Gary and uses his butt to try to fling Gary into the tub, but narrowly misses. Gary is instead thrown against the wall with his shell smashed into pieces and a puddle of slime behind him as he lies against it. In a similar vein to the previous entry, Gary also gets fixed up, but this time that's off screen. Similarly, Patrick's head getting ripped off is next. In Survival of the Idiots, Patrick and Spongebob play in Sandy's snowing tree dome while she hibernates, but they wake her up when they make too much noise. Sandy is huge after storing so much food into her system beforehand, and this makes her so strong that she manages to rip the tip of Patrick's head completely off, leaving an open gap where it once was. This one is a tad more gruesome than the previous two entries because having a body part ripped off is arguably more painful than one being broken. Next up is Squidward choking on his fork. In Naughty Nautical Neighbors, Squidward creates an argument between Spongebob and Patrick, during which he takes the cake he made and eats a slice of it while he sits back and enjoys the show. Once the argument ends, Squidward is in such a massive fit of laughter that he ends up choking on the fork that he was using. You can see the fork stuck in his throat as Squidward chokes, eventually turning blue and falling lifeless on the ground. Fortunately, Patrick is there to perform mouth to mouth and save his life. The scene gets this spot because it's played out for a longer duration of time and the KO part does make it a bit cartoony. It also gives you can't have your cake and eat it too a whole new meaning. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Up next is Firmly Grasp It! In the episode Jellyfishing, Squidward becomes wheelchair bound after an explosive biking accident and Patrick and Spongebob try to make him feel better by giving him his best day ever. If having hot soup being blown into his face and then having a clarinet almost touched by Spongebob's lips weren't bad enough, Squidward next had to endure being brought on a jellyfishing trip. Patrick tries to show him how to properly hold his net, but with his hand being completely bandaged up, he couldn't exactly hold on to it. Patrick eventually loses his patience and jabs the net into Squidward's hand, or rather through his hand, which leads to a painful looking close up of the net digging through the hand. Not only is this surprisingly graphic, but the net stays jabbed in throughout a good part of the episode. Next is Kevin getting stung. In I'm Your Biggest Fanatic, Kevin the Sea Cucumber puts Spongebob through some tests in order to become one of the Jelly Spotters, a group of jellyfish enthusiasts. Kevin's plan is to have Spongebob catch as many jellyfish as possible so that he can get stung for his and the other Jelly Spotters amusement. But it backfires with the jellyfish stinging Kevin and it gets more and more painful each time. At first it's just a few small blemishes, but it escalates beginning with his eyes. A montage then plays of Spongebob catching jellyfish using various different methods while Kevin gets stung on the nose, crown, ears, mouth, and butt, eventually leaving him as one big pink puffy mess. Since Kevin is continuously stung as opposed to say one giant sting, we're deeming this scene more gruesome than the previous one. Feast your eyes on, or in this case in, Spongebob's spiky cleats. 
The Tattletail Strangler disguises himself as SpongeBob's bodyguard and SpongeBob meets the Strangler. When they get to SpongeBob's house, SpongeBob can't find his key, so the Strangler suggests that they climb in through the window, which he can't reach. So SpongeBob tries to get on his supposed bodyguard's shoulders using some spiky cleats for whatever reason but he misses the Strangler's shoulders completely and lands in his eye sockets. The Strangler is left running in pain for six hours until he finally pulls SpongeBob's feet out of his eyes, leaving him with bandages on his eyeballs. We can't help but wince at this scene, especially since so many people are squeamish with eyes and nobody wants any sharp objects being near them, let alone being put into them. In the first of several montages of pain, we get to Gary's accident. In the episode The Great Snail Race, SpongeBob enters Gary into the running of the snails, but because Gary got so overworked into the late hours of the night, he struggles. His eyeballs pop, his shell breaks, revealing an engine. He then speeds against a railing, spins out of control, and explodes when he hits the wall of tires. This is played out for laughs since it resembles a crashing race car, but it's still gruesome nonetheless. Next is Sandy's Extreme Games. The episode Pre-Hibernation Week features SpongeBob agreeing to have fun with Sandy before she goes into hibernation. However, her definition of fun includes plenty of extreme sports. Going down Sand Mountain, SpongeBob's backbones come up through his head upon hitting the ground after a long dive down. Then a montage of more pain the next day includes a bowling ball falling on his head, him being impaled by a fire hydrant after a long fall from the sea needle, and him traversing through a stack of needles in a game of hay in the needle stack. This is nothing compared to the next few entries because the pain inflicted is nowhere near as severe, but still, the needles. Up next is SpongeBob and Patrick beating each other up. In the episode Sports, Sandy's new sports equipment accidentally gets shipped to SpongeBob's house. Of course, he and Patrick are immediately fixated on the equipment, but don't know how to use it at all. Squidward, wanting to be entertained, tells the two that they have to win by getting beat up. We see the two toss horseshoes at each other while blindfolded, run with ice skates on, literally kickbox each other, and fall on top of a jellyfish nest, among other things, all of which causes immense physical pain. This is more gruesome than the previous entry because we get to see pain from both parties involved as opposed to just one. Yay! Next is SpongeBob entertaining the kids. In Crabbyland, Mr. Krabs tells SpongeBob to keep the kids entertained while he counts their money, of course, but SpongeBob comes to the realization that the kids love it when he's in pain. So he deliberately pours bubble soap onto his eyes and listen, it only escalates from there. He rips the middle of his face off with a large piece of tape and has a vehicle continuously run over his tongue. He then pays a muscular man to do various painful things to him, including hitting him in the head with a large hammer, crushing him with a wrecking ball, and force feeding him lima beans. Terrible. The man then calls a friend over to knock SpongeBob around with rackets like a ball and later tear him in half. Since this involves getting crushed and being torn up, among other things, this gets placed here. The final entry in this category is the Sushi Maker. In the episode Life Insurance, SpongeBob and Patrick get life insurance from a commercial on TV, thinking then they can't get hurt. In reality, the pain they try to inflict on themselves goes to Squidward instead. Funny, didn't feel a thing. When Squidward gets their life insurance though, everything painful seems to miss him. So he thinks he's invincible and becomes overconfident. So overconfident, in fact, that he goes through the Sushi Maker, a dangerous obstacle course that SpongeBob and Patrick put together, if that tells you anything. He jumps into a pit of lava by leaping off a diving board, causing him to jump out in pain, hitting a spring and then a steel wall. He then falls onto a lever, which turns on a spiky conveyor belt that he of course lands on, and is also taken through a rolling wheel with sharp coral on it. Then Squidward gets pummeled by boxing gloves until he's turned into a liquid and is poured onto a chair. Finally, he's stretched and turned into a ball by robotic arms, placed into a cannon, and then fired. Which launches Squidball into the bell of a local high school, letting the kids out who trample him. This one was so elaborately prepared and played out that it makes all the other pain montages just pale in comparison. Now we've come to the more gruesome category between the painful and the disgusting. If the painful moments make us wince, well, still, they're nothing compared to the disgusting moments. First, we have the appetizer. In Squilliam Returns, Squidward tells Squilliam that he's the owner of a five-star restaurant to try and one-up him. 
He tries to get SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs, and Patrick to transform the Krusty Krab into one fast before his rival arrives. Mr. Krabs' job is to be the chef, so he creates a horrifying appetizer. A disgusting brown mess with living fly wings, a tail, and other unintelligible materials inside. If for some reason that wasn't enough. Later, Patrick and Mr. Krabs escape the kitchen, fleeing the appetizer, which has become a big blob with an eye, mouth, and a bunch of objects enveloped inside it, including a human foot, somehow. This this one is simply the least disgusting when you compare it to other disgusting objects and anything involving body parts, which we will see a lot of going forward. Next is Spongebob's pink hat. In Scaredy Pants, Spongebob wants to dress up as the Flying Dutchman to scare everyone at the Krusty Krab, so he enlists the help of Patrick. Always a great idea. He tells Patrick that he wants his head to be round, like how many ghosts are depicted, and so Patrick shaves his head down. Once the real Flying Dutchman enters the Krusty Krab and puts Spongebob down for not looking scary, he takes off his sheet. He, along with everyone else at the restaurant, flee in terror, and it's revealed that Spongebob's brain is completely exposed, and that's what made his head round. While a deleted scene would have shown a close-up, you don't need one to see the gruesomeness of the monster Patrick created, who himself is scared off after Spongebob tells him that he's not wearing a pink hat. Oh, that's not a hat. That's my brain. Compared to the rest of the disgusting scenes featuring body parts later down the line, this is nothing. At least Spongebob's skin will grow back. And the rest of his body. Up next is Brothers. Only closer. In Can You Spare a Dime, Spongebob tells Squidward that he can come to him if he ever needs anything. But he takes this to the extreme when he says that he and Squidward are closer than brothers. A brief visual gag then ensues of the two having one conjoined exposed heart and the fact that it's beating only increases the disgust factor. We're placing it here because despite it being very brief, we still can't help but be grossed out by it. Now we get to Gummy. The episode Gift of Gum sees Patrick give Spongebob a giant wad of gum he calls Gummy for Best Friends Day. It is a massive understatement to say that Gummy is disgusting in concept alone. The fact that it's wet and has already been chewed is just the tip of the iceberg. Now this gumball is the complete package. Package. It has old moldy food, a used toothbrush, and has used clothes inside of it. And at one point, a piece of underwear slithers out from within and talks. If that wasn't bad enough, SpongeBob finds living people inside that have been trapped for years. This gets a leg up because the previous three entries are far tamer. Next up are the fleas. In A Flea in Her Dome, SpongeBob and Patrick throw Sandy a surprise party to welcome her home after coming back from Texas. Unfortunately, Sandy unknowingly brought a flea with her, and chaos ensues. A flea collar is shared among the three, and the flea jumps to and bites whomever isn't wearing it. At some points, the flea is shown up close, and in pretty good detail, mind you, and even goes up Sandy's nose and into her eye. However, it gets gross after it shows the flea lay eggs, and said eggs hatch on Sandy's head. Sandy ties the collar around her, SpongeBob, and Patrick, but the fleas quickly multiply and just do away with the collar. The three soon end up in a sea of fleas, resulting in their skin puffing up and them gaining rashes. There is worse to come, but looking at fleas up close, much less flea eggs hatching, plus the rashes, they make this pretty gruesome. We have the Flying Dutchman's transformation next. In the episode Ghost Host, the Flying Dutchman stays at SpongeBob's house, and he's terrified at first, especially with the ghost continuously trying to scare him. Once SpongeBob's gotten tired of him, however, the Dutchman tries one more time, and he goes pretty overboard. First, he jumps out as a drooling monster, rips off his skin to become a cockroach, and melts to become a caterpillar with a baby's head. A clown head then pops out of the baby's mouth, which transforms into a guy smoking a pipe, which then morphs into SpongeBob's head, whose eyeballs slither out with a bunch of spiders coming out, marking the grand finale. Yeah, no, we're still talking about SpongeBob. We can imagine many kids being freaked out by this, which is pretty disturbing for SpongeBob standards. However, some points are docked because of that random random dude with a pipe, which is just random. Next is Pearl's Barnacle. Sure, the entirety of Barnacle Face is gross, but there's one scene in particular that we thought we'd mention. Pearl gets a barnacle, which is the show's equivalent to a pimple, and when she shows it to Mr. Krabs, we get a close-up of it. It's a big purple bruise with some yellow pus dripping out. This is the first of a few scenes that involve bodily fluids, and those aren't fun to watch. Why are there so many? Up next are Spongy Patties. 
The Krusty Krab becomes a SpongeBob-centric restaurant called The Krusty Sponge in the episode of the same name. Eventually, Mr. Krabs has Squidward stop using the normal patties in place of rotten patties that happen to have the same color and pattern as SpongeBob. Krabs calls these spongy patties, and when SpongeBob discovers the customers after having eaten them, they are yellow with green spots, bulbous bellies, and are moaning in pain like zombies. Anything involving zombies is bound to be gruesome, and this is no exception. From one gross patty to another, we have to love a patty. This entire episode is disgusting. Here, SpongeBob falls so madly in love with the Krabby Patty that he made that he just can't part with it. It's okay, Patty. The fire's gone. You're safe now. Why this one out of the millions of patties he's made in his career? Uh, we'll never know. He spends the entire day with it, but the problem is, it's food. It gets old after just a short while. And that's exactly what happens to it when SpongeBob takes it to the Krusty Krab on a date. It starts to smell, and we get a few gross, detailed close-ups of what the patty looks like. You can see the mold and bacteria growing on it, and even some parasitic larvae. But what tops everything off is when Mr. Krabs tells SpongeBob to eat the now rotten patty, which he does! The grave detail of the whole thing makes it gruesome, not to mention that we can just taste it and smell it ourselves when watching. The next entry goes to Patrick's Insides. In the episode Ink Lemonade, Patrick's Lemonade becomes a huge hit in town when some of Squidward's ink accidentally gets in. Since Squidward only releases ink when he gets scared, Patrick starts scaring him in order to get more. The very first way in which Patrick intentionally gets him to ink is quite gruesome. He reveals his insides, knocks on Squidward's door, and then catches him way off guard. This is pretty graphic as it shows his lungs beating heart as well as his intestines, which Patrick makes talk. This is SpongeBob and Squidward's conjoined heart cranked up to 100. And what makes this worse is that it's on screen for quite a while, forcing us to look at it the whole time. Now we have the Krabby Patty creature feature. In this episode, the Krusty Krab customers are sick of the same old Krabby Patties. So Mr. Krabs, with help from Sandy, makes new ones that are orange and float. The customers love them, but they all soon start to feel sick and turn into enlarged Krabby Patty zombies. Their pain and agony can be seen on the looks on their faces and heard in the groans they make. They also feed parts of themselves to other people, making them turn into zombies as well. That's not so bad! Thankfully, SpongeBob manages to escape and discovers that feeding them Plankton's chum makes them puke up the patties and turns them back to normal. What makes this really disgusting are the characters' large, exaggerated facial expressions and bulbous appearances. And with that said, this is easily one of the most gruesome episodes of all time. Next, we have, is there something wrong with me? In Whatever Happened to SpongeBob, SpongeBob loses his memory after running away from home. He ends up in New Kelp City, where he can't keep a job. In one scene, he stops a random guy on the street and asks him if something's wrong with him. This leads to what is probably the most disgusting close-up in the entire series. The close-up is particularly grotesque and detailed, showing every last hair, vein, and bit of bodily fluid on SpongeBob's body. His teeth are brown, his skin is dry and crusty, his pants are torn, and a snot bubble forms out of his nostril. The guy runs away scared, and we don't blame him. This entry just speaks for itself. An a for the artist that drew this shot, though. Rounding out this category is Fungus Among Us. Everything begins when Gary spots some fungi on the ground and starts to eat it. SpongeBob tries to clean it up, and then he starts scratching his head after touching it. The fungus grows on his head and progressively gets bigger and bigger the more he scratches it. At work, some drips onto his nose, and when he flicks it onto the wall, it grows bigger. SpongeBob wipes it off the wall with his arms, but that only makes it spread more. Squidward then has SpongeBob taken away by a SWAT team, who is then put into quarantine in his house, where at that point, he has more fungus grown on him. The fungus has now since spread to the Krusty Krab, where it gets on all the food and soon has everyone covered in it. SpongeBob, having escaped quarantine, arrives back at the restaurant in a giant bubble and is a bloated mess, with him completely engulfed in the fungus, not to mention that he's also waist deep in pus. The customers, livid at SpongeBob for infecting them, have the bright idea of attacking his bubble, and eventually it pops, leaving the restaurant covered in the fungus. Thankfully, Gary's there to save the day by cleaning everyone off, but yeah, this icky, bright green fungus is not a pretty sight to behold, and that's putting it lightly. But we're not finished yet. We have one final category reserved for the moments that are extraordinarily gruesome, combining elements from the previous two. This is the painful and disgusting category. We begin this category with Snail Bob. 
In the episode I Was a Teenage Gary, Squidward forgets to feed Gary while SpongeBob's away at a jellyfishing convention. When he gets back, a vet comes to SpongeBob's house to tell him to inject a sickly Gary with some snail plasma to make him feel better. With both SpongeBob and the vet being squeamish about handling needles, it's up to Squidward to inject Gary with the plasma. As a result of SpongeBob not holding Gary still, Squidward accidentally injects the former's nose, and well, they don't think much of it. Nothing is gonna happen to you. You're fine. However, SpongeBob soon starts to have a taste for snail food and walks abnormally slow. The gruesome part is when he gets to the mirror to look at himself, where he transforms into a snail. His eyes pop out of their sockets, and he falls to the ground. His arms and legs shrivel up, his back arches, and he begins to talk in meows. Not only is this painful for SpongeBob, but the transformation is slow and gross. But compared to the rest in this category, this is absolutely nothing. Next is the Nasty Patty. This whole episode is a gruesome mess. Here a health inspector comes into the Krusty Krab wanting one of everything on the menu for free. He gets what he wants except for one plain Krabby Patty. When SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs see on the news that a man is out passing as a health inspector to try and get free food, they think their guy's the imposter. So they try to take matters into their own hands, soiling the patty using the most disgusting methods imaginable in an effort to poison him. I call it the nasty patty. Before he could take a bite though, the health inspector swallows a fly, causing him to choke and fall unconscious. Of course, Krabs and SpongeBob think they killed him with the patty and start to panic when the news reveals a picture of the actual imposter who had just been caught. That night, the two drag the inspector to a hill where they try to bury him in a shallow grave. He wakes up, but is knocked back unconscious by a rock. The police, unaware of the body, invite Krabs and SpongeBob for a ride back to the restaurant. It suddenly starts raining, making the inspector slip out of the grave. SpongeBob hides both the body and the shovel they buried him with in the trunk, and he has to hide the body in his hat when going through the Krusty Krab's front door, because the back door to the freezer was locked. When the two admit to the cops about their crime, the health inspector then comes in trying to speak, but's hit in the head with an anchor and a barrel by the cops, thinking that he's a zombie. Makes sense. Thankfully, he's able to tell Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob that they passed their inspection. This poor man is put through so much, and the macabre subject matter is particularly dark for a kid's show. We don't know how this one got through the censors. Plus, have you seen the Nasty Patty up close? Up next is SpongeBob's insides being attacked. In Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 4, when SpongeBob accidentally shrinks the entire town with the shrink ray, the townspeople start attacking him by climbing up into his insides. Squidward kicks his bladder, Sandy bashes his brain, and Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy knock his eyes out of their sockets. He also has a pelvic bone destroyed, a kidney chopped off, and another bone broken. All shown in, of course, excruciating detail. Squidward is even close to sawing an artery open. It really shouldn't have to be explained as to why this one's gruesome. Earlier in that same episode is Mermaid Man's belt. After SpongeBob takes Mermaid Man's utility belt, he plays around with its shrink ray capabilities, which we mentioned before. When Squidward catches him, he threatens SpongeBob to give it back by walking towards the phone, about to call Mermaid Man. SpongeBob then shrinks Squidward, preventing him from doing so. Unfortunately, SpongeBob doesn't know how to bring him back to his normal size, so he tries using several of the belt's powers, hoping to get it to work. This causes many gruesome things to happen to Squidward, including giving him a Medusa snake hair and a bunch of eyeballs, setting him on fire, making his nose gigantic, turning his skin inside out, and having a pair of scissors cut him in half, the latter of which exposes his brain. And if that wasn't enough, his agonizing screams can be heard off screen along with a bunch of disturbing, garbled up sounds at one point. SpongeBob is shown to be particularly disgusted by that one, so we're glad we didn't have to see it. This one's ranked fairly close to the top because of both the imagery and sounds involved, and we personally don't want to be involved in a situation like this. Next is Patrick ripping off his skin. In Sandcastles in the Sand, there's a short one that's very much worth mentioning. In the beginning of the episode, after SpongeBob tells Patrick they're about to go to the beach together, SpongeBob rips off his pants to reveal his swimsuit. Patrick repeats, but he rips the entire front of his skin off instead, leaving nothing but muscle. Compare this to the entry where Patrick shows his intestines. That doesn't look particularly painful. This does. And it's also gross. SpongeBob says to Patrick that he'll just need some sunscreen, but if you ask us, we think he needs much more than that. Just outside the top three is Squidward's eyebrow. 
Pineapple Fever has a brief scene where Squidward is plucking his eyebrow hair, and as soon as SpongeBob and Patrick start boarding up SpongeBob's house before a storm, Squidward loses his concentration from the hammering, and this causes him to tear his entire eyebrow off, skin and all, leaving a fleshy red wound. This is more gruesome than our previous entry because not only does it last longer, but it feels more out of place and just less cartoony overall. Our bronze medal of gruesome goes to Squidward's toenail. Poor Squidward just can't catch a break, can he? The episode House Fancy contains what's one of the most infamous gruesome moments of the entire show. When Squidward tries to get his house in ship shape to prepare it for it to be shown on reality TV, SpongeBob helps. Naturally, this doesn't go well. The famous moment is when he tries to help Squidward move his couch and accidentally gets it caught on top of Squidward's foot. It squishes Squidward's toenail and rips it straight off. SpongeBob then picks up the couch and crushes Squidward's foot again, this time showing the open wound and the toenail on the floor. If that doesn't sound bad enough, somehow, Squidward even slips on his toenail when he attempts to pick up the couch himself. This is the previous entry on steroids, enough said. The silver medal of gruesome goes to the splinter. After tripping and falling at work, SpongeBob gets a large splinter in his thumb. It really speaks volumes when the scene in which Spongebob rips his face off, exposing his skeleton, is the least gruesome scene in this episode. When Squidward falsely tells Spongebob that Krabs will send him home early because of his injury, Spongebob asks for none other than Dr. Patrick's help to try and get it out. Of course, in classic Patrick fashion, he only makes it worse by hitting it with a hammer, making it swell up, and putting garbage on it, making more pus come out. When SpongeBob comes back inside and shows it to Mr. Krabs, his thumb is so big that it looks like one of those candy apples. You probably won't look at candy apples the same way ever again. You're welcome. No, I'm sorry, that's awful. <laughs> Mr. Krabs then pulls the splinter out and gets covered in a fountain of pus. This gets the silver medal because it combines two of the grossest, most painful things that can happen to a person, getting a splinter and the disgust disgusting pussy wound. Finally, the gold medal of gruesome goes to Spongebob Tentacle Pants. Sandy had just invented a transportation machine, and a mistake involving Spongebob and Squidward causes them to become fused together. Squidward's head is protruding out of Spongebob, and they share one arm and one leg each. But that's not the most gruesome part. Sandy attempts to reverse this mistake by transporting them to multiple different places, with Spongebob and Squidward becoming more and more disgusting each time. They first end up as a young kid's birthday present, looking incomprehensible as they moan and groan in pain. They then become a woman's newly delivered baby, their heads fused together while their arms and legs flail around. And finally, they end up on an alien planet looking, well, like an alien. However, this is nothing compared to what happens at the end of the episode. Nothing! Sandy manages to separate the two with her molecular separator ray during Squidward's surprisingly successful clarinet recital. Though once the crowd inevitably becomes angry and leaves, Squidward desperately tries to fuse him and SpongeBob back together by continually pressing the button on the device, eventually causing it to make the entire main cast disappear. Afterwards, at a therapist's office, it shows their gruesome fate. They've all been fused into one massive mound of pus and body parts and are all very clearly in pain, much like me watching this. This has to get the gold because this doesn't occur naturally. This was all done artificially by a machine and led to a very disturbing outcome. Not to mention, it is quite disturbing for a kid's show. Word for the wise, don't play around with molecular separator rays. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking. And tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and check out more of our SpongeBob videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.